Welcome to Global Signs, everyone. From Lexington, Massachusetts, we'll be speaking with Judd Lehman, General Manager at Kaplan International Languages. Their parent company, Kaplan Inc., is one of the world's largest and most diverse education providers, operating in 28 countries and offering education and training to more than 1 million students worldwide. Judd, welcome to Global Signs. Thank you, Bruce. It's a pleasure to be here. It's really nice to speak with you guys. Thank you. Judd, can you tell our viewers about your company, Kaplan International Languages? Of course. As you mentioned in your introduction, Kaplan International Languages is part of a larger company called Kaplan Inc. Kaplan Inc. Is a, originally started as a test preparation company in New York about 80 years ago and has grown since then into the large international company you mentioned. The one that I work for, the entity that I work for, Kaplan International Languages, is focused on teaching English, French, and German uh, in schools in destination countries. So unlike a lot of uh, uh, ways that people learn English online, we're really focused on face-to-face -face learning in the destinations and countries where the language is spoken. Are there any changes in the demand for language training and study abroad since COVID-19? What are the other effects of COVID-19 on the language education market? Definitely, definitely. There have been some effects like there have been for everything. I mean, I think you, I mean, the impact overall in the U.S. education market has been quite profound. Uh, between two and four billion dollars lost in the spring of 2020 from canceled courses of international students. I think the other side effects you've seen, I mean, you've definitely seen this growth in the use of some uh, different kinds of technology, which has been interesting. With Kaplan, for example, we were able to convert a lot of our coursework into online courses and teach students that way. How do you see the current use of web-based teaching tools in your industry? Do you think they're going to create some permanent changes in the way students learn other languages? Well, that's really, that's a great question. Uh, definitely there will be. I think, uh, as I mentioned before, many companies, including ours, were able to convert to online teaching and using these web-based tools to, uh, to offer their product. Uh, what online tools also give you is the ability, I think, to expand the customer base. So, for example, I think with English, for example, you have more beginner students and more advanced students, it seems maybe a little counterintuitively, who might benefit from online products. Beginning students, because they can do a lot of the basic work, all the basic vocabulary. They can use the AI tools to you know, gauge their speaking and listening, listening skills. For advanced students, they can actually use online tools and custom coursework to focus in on very specific things that they might want to study. So I think the online tools are going to create you know, kind of changes for us, but uh, but I'm still also a very firm believer in the importance of face-to-face -face education. President Biden recently said he would invest in education through infrastructure investment stimulus measures. How will this affect the education market? Well, I saw that. You know, last night, he, uh, in his uh, address to the Joint Congress uh, session, he mentioned, I think, about $100 billion uh, funding into, this, uh, into funding for various kinds of education programs, including one of the really exciting ones was are all familiar with the community college is a two-year college here in the United States. It offers a it does offer an accredited degree, but the, historically they've always really been focused on job training and skills training. And I think that's one of the things that will be very exciting about making that kind of product available to more Americans and maybe to more students coming in from overseas. Um, one of the gaps that we think we've had here in our economy has been a skills gap in some ways, and I think this goes a bit of a way towards uh, filling that maybe. Now. How do you see Korea's place in the international education marketplace? So I think Korea, you know, it's, it's not yet maybe at the level of K-pop or K-drama, but I think K-ed is something that's going to be a big thing in the next uh, 10 years or so. You know, you have obviously a, a society that's very focused on education, has a highly skilled workforce, and a real motivation to kind of create cool tools. Now, finally, Judd, can you recommend any U.S. and Korean stocks to our investors? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, in the U.S. market, I think, you know, I've been thinking a little bit about there's a company called Coursera. It's traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, it was founded in 2012 by two Stanford computer science professors. They are growing in revenue, they're growing in students and subscribers. And I think I'm getting very bullish on travel in general and how there's a lot of pent up demand. So I think here in the U.S., we have an airline called Southwest, which is a domestic airline. Uh, and they are really always considered one of the best managed airlines in the U.S., certainly, and maybe around the world. Very loyal customer base, uh, well-funded. They've got a healthy balance sheet. They didn't have to take on as much debt as a lot of their competitors. And the big thing about them is that they're domestically focused, so they don't have these expensive overseas routes. And I think a lot of the initial travel in the U.S. is going to be domestic this year, as people still are a little bit wary of going abroad. But there will be definitely a lot of domestic travel. 
ETFs you could look at. There's a Spider uh, S&P 500 transportation index called XTN, which covers about 40 different transportation stocks if you want to take a broader play. For the Korean side, I'm not really a big uh, investor in the Korean market, but I do like uh, LG Chemical. In particular, I've been reading about a potential for a spin out of the LG Electric Solution part of their business. And I think that's really exciting in that they're obviously making uh, parts and batteries for electric vehicles. Uh, that's something here in the US, at least, that is growing exponentially. And there's a lot of demand now, and they become really quite normal. And I think uh, looking for the deals that they've made now with General Motors, for example, to build batteries. General Motors, the large U.S. Uh, auto manufacturer, has said that they are going to go completely electric within this decade. So having a partnership with them is going to be a very exciting thing, I think, for, for the LG Electric Solutions. The other piece I'm kind of interested about them is, you know, if, if the current political situation continues, I think the Biden administration has maintained a pretty hard line on China. And a lot of the battery parts and a lot of the parts of the EVs are coming out of China. So if that situation turns or stays a little bit sour, there might be a lot of demand for a Korean uh, supplier of some of these kinds of parts. Judd Lehman, General Manager at Kaplan International Languages, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your insights on the education market. It's been a pleasure, Bruce. Thank you very much. Thank you. Judd recommends four stocks. For the United States, he recommends Coursera, Southwest Airlines, and Spider S&P Transportation ETF. His Korean stock recommendation is LG Chemical. Thank you so much for being with us today. Until next week, please be safe and healthy.